Live from Case at 12, the news at 530 starts right now. We begin tonight with the search for the suspect in a deadly hit and run crash. A family now left without a mother on Mother's Day. Now that crash happened yesterday on Culebra and Alamo Downs Parkway on the city's west side. San Antonio police, though, just released these details to us today. Our John Paul Barajas live at the scene now where this all happened. John Paul, you also just learned the name of this victim, correct? Tim, Courtney, that's right. The medical examiner ID that woman as a 44 year old woman. Her name, Jessica Harper. She lived just one mile from where this crash happened. Now out here, all the debris has been cleared out, but uh, orange spray paint on the pavement is still there from the investigation itself. According to SAPD, a witness said a black Yukon ran a red light, crashing into the victim's gray Ford Focus. The driver of the Yukon then got out and took off on foot, running down Alamo Downs Parkway. Officers searched on the ground and also launched the helicopter up, trying to find the suspect in the sky. But at last check, that person has not been caught. Harper was taken to University Hospital, where she ended up dying, and her passenger, a 74-year-old man, suffered a broken shoulder. Now, we did speak briefly with the victims, uh, family friends of the victim. They said the family did not want to talk at this time. They're still mourning. We respected their wishes, but they did tell us that uh, Harper's children are now having to go through Mother's Day without their mom. John Paul Barajas, Kisa, 12 News. Tragic story. Thank you so much, John Paul. The suspect in a break in tried to make a getaway not once but twice. It happened overnight on the city's west side. Police say a man forced his way into a home about a block from North General McMullen in Commerce. The homeowner then shot at the suspect twice. Officers say that's when the suspect first tried to run away. EMS units found him down the road and loaded him into an ambulance, but police say he managed to escape that ambulance. Police later caught up with him. The man's in the hospital now expecting to survive. New at 530, a wrong way driver believed to have caused a deadly three car crash. That wrong way driver killed in the crash and investigators now left with several questions in that case. Jonathan Cotto spoke with police who responded to the wreck on Bandera Road. San Antonio police were called out to this terrifying scene, a three vehicle crash on the lanes of Bandera Road and Zachary Drive on the city's west side. This happening close to 11 this morning. Police say the male driver of the white van was traveling westbound on Bandera Road in eastbound lanes when he struck two other vehicles. The wrong way driver of the white van was found unresponsive at the scene. He died on the way to the hospital. The other two involved in this crash have serious injuries, but are expected to be okay. Right now, it's unclear why the driver of the white van was traveling in the wrong direction. Police say this crash is under investigation and they will be determining if alcohol or any other substance was a factor in this crash. Reporting from the west side, Jonathan Cotto, KSA 12 News. The other big story today continues to be the heat. You definitely felt it if you went outside. Some families chose to spend Mother's Day at the splash pad at Parasol Park. It was a way to keep the kids cool and give mom a bit of a break. This is just one of several splash pads that are open around town. We have a full list of city owned splash pads open on KSAT.com. Gosh, we really needed that today. Uh, yeah, you guys can go ahead and call me Brittany because, oops, we did it again. <laughs> oh, look at you. Go. Again today, <laughs> high temperature at the airport 101. My friends, that's just one degree shy of today's record high temperature. We set a new record yesterday, very close again today. So we've already got two triple digit days under our belt this year with yesterday's high of 101 and today's high of 100. I'll have to edit that. We had to wait for the final data to come in from the weather service, but that was a high of 101. So this is the earliest consecutive 100 degree days or instance of consecutive 100 degree days that we've had here in San Antonio since records started being kept. And that was in 1885. Previously, the earliest occurrence of consecutive 100 degree days was back in May of 1967. So this is some significant heat that has set in this weekend. We get out of the triple digits this work and school week, but it's still going to be unseasonably hot. We'll talk more about what the week has in store coming up in just a bit. Thank you, Brittany. <laughs> <laughs> I had to. Mother's Day is expected to hit another record when it comes to spending money on mom. The National Retail Federation expects people will end up spending nearly $32 billion this year. The agency also conducted surveys that suggest the top three gifts people are spending money on are greeting cards, flowers, and a special outing like dinner or brunch. 
Well, the countdown is on if you plan to protest your property appraisal this year. On average, a single family residence is up nearly 28 percent, meaning an increase on your tax bill. If you do not protest, you will have until May 16th to file those protests. That's about one week away. We show you how to do it yourself on KSAT.com. And tomorrow, residents in District 3 will be able to attend a property tax workshop. Councilwoman Phyllis Villagran is hosting that event. It will be happening tomorrow from 6 in the evening until 730 at the Pre-K for SA building over on South New Braunfels Avenue. And several propositions were voted on last night, and they have an impact on property taxes. A reminder that all of our election coverage from yesterday is online. We lay out the measures on that ballot and what it all means for you. Just click on the article on the home page. Time and money are two factors many students consider when deciding their next steps after high school. One local school district is hoping to make that process easier with a one-stop shop. I think that's something that's really important because um, not many like students have the opportunity to really like focus on college and go to that next level. East Central ISD has come up with something called the Go Center. The one-stop shop is meant to help ease the transition for students who are about to graduate and help prepare them for the challenges ahead. Tonight on the Night Beat, we take a look at how the district is making this operation happen. Still ahead on this newscast, as the war in Ukraine escalates, the U.S. placing more restrictions on Russia, what they entail, plus the First Lady with a surprise visit to the war zone. And Catholic churches now stepping up security. This after abortion rights tweets made the rounds with a renewed call for protests. That story next on the News at 5.30. That leaked Supreme Court draft opinion on abortion is leading to more protests, and now Catholic churches in cities across the country are increasing security. Last week's leaks stirred up concerns that Roe v. Wade could be overturned. Abortion rights at advocates have called for more protests. One of the groups explaining on Twitter they want to strike in and outside Catholic churches because, quote, six extremist Catholics set out to overturn Roe, end quote. A 2019 Pew survey reveals that even though Catholic teachings prohibit abortion, more than half of U.S. Catholics, 56 percent to be exact, said abortion should be legal in all cases or most cases. If Roe v. Wade is overturned, laws governing abortion will be left to the states. To the latest now on the war in Ukraine, the U.S. taking new steps to punish Russia for its unprovoked invasion of Ukraine. A new round of sanctions announced today. The new sanctions include cutting off Kremlin-controlled media outlets from American advertisers. The U.S. also pledged additional support for Ukraine. Meanwhile, First Lady Jill Biden making a surprise visit to Ukraine, meeting with Ukraine's First Lady at a converted school now serving as temporary housing for displaced citizens. Biden's visit to Ukraine is the first time a U.S. First Lady has visited a war zone since Laura Bush made a secret visit to Afghan Afghanistan back in 2008. Back here at home, a good reminder, if you need a place to beat this heat, there are several cooling centers in our area. We have the entire list of locations and times online right now at KSAT.com. Just click on the story. As Katie told us earlier in this newscast, we are shattering records. Let's take a look outside. 99 degrees on the old thermometer there down in the corner of our screen, but we hit 100 again. Yep, we did it. 101, our high temperature this afternoon. Doesn't There's not a big difference between 101 no. and 99. It's still plenty hot out there, and it's going to be a very toasty evening as we wrap up the weekend. We'll talk more about the work week here in just a couple of minutes. First, the aqua for today is up just one-tenth of a foot, but it's still 18 feet below the monthly average. And in your Sunday pollen count, mold are moderate with a count of 590. Grass and pecan are both low. We'll be right back. Considering we had to go all the way back to 1967 to break the record, <laughs> I'm hoping this is just an anomaly, not set, setting us up for a very long hot summer. Yeah, seriously, I, I'm not ready to start this yet. No. Yeah, no, I don't, think, I don't think anyone is. Uh, and yeah, this is early for triple digit heat. On average, we start to see triple digits work into the forecast late June. So we are ahead of schedule. Here's a look at high temperatures elsewhere across South Central Texas. And just keep in mind, you guys, our average high this time of year. So if you want to think about where we should be when we look back at the last 30 years or so is 85. So we're 15 degrees um, above 
above that and uh, it's just very hot out there. 105 the high in Catula today, 106 Carrizo Springs. Uh, the real issue today has been our heat index readings or our feels like temperature. That's the yellow number here and that's what you get when you factor in the humidity. The higher that the humidity stays, the hotter it feels to our bodies and that potentially can be dangerous when we get these heat index values above 110 degrees uh, closing in on 115. That can be really tough on our bodies if we're not taking frequent breaks when outside and also staying properly hydrated and look at some of these heat index readings right now. Port SA 102, but Stinson 111, Divine 103, Hondo 105. So it is hot, hot, hot out there. Uh, heat index readings are also closing in on 110 places like Carrizo Springs, Catula down in Laredo. It feels like 112. Uh, the issue today, the reason why these heat index numbers are higher today is because our dew points have not fallen off as much this afternoon. Yesterday, we had dew points down in the 40s and even 50s, so that takes the edge off of the heat index. But dew point numbers have stayed elevated this afternoon, and that's producing some of those very elevated and dangerous heat index readings currently. Thankfully, what we've got on our side here is a wind out of the southeast. Now, kind of a double edged sword here, the southeast wind direction brings in the high humidity, but uh, it's cranking between about 10 and 20 miles per hour in most places. So that steady breeze is helping us out completely clear skies with the exception of places south of Del Rio between Del Rio and Eagle Pass. There's looks like a little storm trying to get going in the higher terrain of northern Mexico there that's producing some cloud cover off to the east. Otherwise, that's it. Clear skies and we'll keep your skies clear this evening as we wrap up the weekend. Just like past couple of mornings, we'll wake up to clouds tomorrow. So the clouds will fill back in after midnight through uh, about dawn tomorrow morning. Temperature wise tomorrow morning. Very warm, very muggy, just like today. Low to mid 70s, even some spots south of Highway 90, pushing upper 70s to start the day tomorrow. Also, just like today, the morning clouds burn off pretty quickly. We're seeing plenty of sun by lunchtime and then clear skies as we head into the afternoon. Another unseasonably hot day tomorrow, but I don't anticipate that we'll see quite as many triple digits on the board. Nonetheless, you should expect high temperatures in the upper 90s in many spots. 97 uh, around the airport, Northern Bear County, 98 Florida. Floresville, 97 New Braunfels, 95 Bandera, and a few triple digits off to the west. It feels like temperatures or heat index readings will be elevated again tomorrow around San Antonio. I expect hottest part of the day tomorrow. They'll peak between 100 and 105, but a few more heat indices closing in on 110 possible south and west of San Antonio. So we've got the heat. Can we stir up any rain? Not looking great this week. The next chance of rain will come late in the day on Tuesday. The dry line sets up out in West Texas. That will produce some scattered strong to severe storms from Lubbock down through Midland. Uh, closer to San Angelo, we'll have to see if any of that activity can try to wander our direction. It looks like a lot of it will fizzle out after the sun goes down, so that leaves us with just a very slim chance for a late day shower on Tuesday. We'll keep you updated there. No chance of rain tomorrow, just more heat, morning clouds, afternoon sun, a high of 97, but the breeze hangs around not only tomorrow, but also for several days this week. So at least we've got that on our side, guys. Thank goodness. It's too sticky out there not to have it. Yes, I'll be in the AC. <laughs> All right, Larry, quite a feat to uh, get drafted into the NFL, but even better when you end up on a team you actually wanted to go to. Yeah, DeMarvin Leal is who you were talking about. He wanted to become a Pittsburgh Steeler because he just really hit it off with their defensive coaches on that staff. And you know what? He's going to leave Thursday for his first rookie or NFL minicamp, I should say. And in the WNBA, Coach Hammond, as you would expect, she's all about defense. Coming up. Pro football coverage. Powered by Davis Law Firm. Pittsburgh Steelers rookie and third round draft pick DeMarvin Lau is getting ready for his first NFL offseason work. The team's rookie minicamp is set for May 13th through the 15th. Steelers general manager Kevin Colbert said DeMarvin's a very athletic guy with some linebacker type movements. His athletic ability certainly caught their attention. Marv recently sat down with Steelers team reporter Missy Matthews and she asked if he was surprised the Steelers drafted him or did he have a hunch they were set to draft him 84th overall. I wanted to come here, so like it was a no-brainer when I got that call from Pittsburgh. So it was like I was more waiting on it, just time. So it was just all God's timing as well. So just was blessed when I first got it. Why did you want to come here? 
Uh, you know, Coach Dunbar, you know, he's a fantastic coach. And, you know, he, he has ties with my defense line coach at A&M as well. So, you know, just when we first met, it was just automatically clicked. The Marvin is also thrilled to join former Aggies linebacker Buddy Johnson, who's entering his second season with the Steelers. Seattle Seahawks rookie cornerback Tariq Woolen is dealing with a hamstring problem, making him more of an observer at rookie minicamp. He's been able to participate in walkthroughs, though. The former UTSA cornerback from Fort Worth is enjoying the change of scenery provided by the Pacific Northwest. It's been pretty fun, honestly. You know, I'm from Texas, so. I ain't never seen as much green to me. There's a lot of big trees too, so I haven't really seen too much of that, but I like it because it's just different from where I'm from. Head coach Pete Carroll, who is playing it safe with Woolen, said he loves corners and can't wait to work with Woolen and the other guys. The Las Vegas Aces will look to open the regular season with two straight wins to start off the Becky Hammond era when they host the Seattle Storm tonight. The Aces won their season opener on the road, beating Phoenix 106-88. Becky graded that performance with a B and told the media what she wants them to do better. Just schematically, defensively, um, you know, I would say we did it right about 80% of the time. You know, I'm a coach. I want it 100% of the time. So I'll stay on them. They all know I've told them I'm going to coach them hard on that end of the floor. Uh, offensively, I know uh, their skills at times will, will just take over. Um, there's no need to get fancy. They can they can flat out score the ball. So I, I give them a lot of trust on that, that aspect. The Aces will host the Storm tonight at 9 on ESPN2. The LA Sparks beat the Indiana Fever today, 87-77. Fever rookie Alyssa Smith had 13 points and 9 rebounds, just missing her second straight double-double. Turning to the NBA playoffs, the Memphis Grizzlies are not happy about two things. Their 30-point loss last night in Game 3 and Warriors shooting guard Jordan Poole. Late in the Warriors' 142-112 win, Poole grabbed Ja Morant's right knee during a fourth-quarter trap. Morant limped off the court with some six minutes ago, and he didn't return. He left without talking to reporters, but tweeted broke the code with video of Poole grabbing his knee before later deleting the tweet. He was a basketball player. When we went, we doubled him, um, and I hit the ball, and I was going for the ball. I mean, obviously, you don't want to see anybody get hurt. Um, I'm not even that type of player. I respect everybody, so... I mean, obviously, hopefully we get better. Hopefully he gets better and, um, you know, we can see him out there in this game. But, you know, I don't even play like that for real. It's unfortunate. You never want to see that type of stuff. But obviously it's not done by no one's, no one's out here dirty. No one's out here. No one's out here like that. But it's just unfortunate. So, you know the code. <laughs> Talk about the code all series at this point. Steve Kerr watched the play and said there's nothing to comment on. Game four is tomorrow night, and Golden State leads two games to one. San Antonio FC lost at Phoenix Rising FC last night 3-0, their first defeat on the road this season. SAFC outshot Phoenix 25-23 and held the advantage in possession at 52.3%. The loss snaps a streak of four straight USL matches without allowing a goal. San Antonio FC will play at the Houston Dynamo FC this Wednesday at 7.30 p.m. in the U.S. Open Cup round of 32. Our Lady of the Lake softball hosting Texas A&M Texarkana on day three, the Red River Athletic Conference softball tournament. Bottom of the fourth, Saints down two to nothing when Cassandra Valdez hits a double to left field. That scores Ariel Montgomery and Kayla Dries tying this game at two all. Next inning, same score. Joanna Gonzalez goes big fly to center field. Solo shot to make it three to two Our Lady of the Lake and the Saints win it four to two. They'll face Texas A&M Texarkana at 12.30 p.m. tomorrow in the championship game. Texas A&M San Antonio lost to UH Victoria five to one today and they were eliminated from the tournament. Last night, Johnson in baseball defeated New Braunfels 11 to nothing in game three of their by district series, but no play stood out more than Kaysen Cunningham's diving catch in the top of the fourth. Take a look again, full extension for the out. Amazing. The Jaguars are still alive and will take on Lake Travis in the area round this week. Only young guys can do that. <laughs> that looks painful. Yeah. <laughs> I'd be in bed for a week after that. Thanks, Larry. <laughs> we'll be right back. Looking ahead to this work and school week, we bring your highs down a little bit, but we're still trending about 10 degrees above average for this time of year. Mornings will be warm and muggy with lows in the low to mid 70s afternoons, hot with highs in the mid to upper 90s. Few very slim chances of rain sprinkled in this week, guys. 
it has begun. That's all of our time. Thanks for watching. We'll see you back here for the night beat tonight at 10. Have a good evening.